Hello, welcome to another computer video from Henley's Happy Trails. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about Google Maps. Uh, we use it for uh, trip planning with, uh, coupled with allstays.com. We will uh, plan the trip using Google Maps roadwise, um, and we will find the places that we're going to stop, like uh, Walmart parking lots. Um, we'll look at uh, low bridges and so on uh, from allstays.com. Um, if you were interested in Allstays, it is definitely a valuable travel application. Um, you can use it on your computer. Um, I did a video on that, so uh, click on the little thing that just popped up to see that video and uh, check out all stays. But um, we don't use that to plan the travel route or as far as the roads that we're going to go on, we'll use Google Maps. So you can see I'm in my uh, web browser. I use Chrome and I'm just going to type in maps up at the top or map and Google Maps is the first thing that shows up. So I'll click there. Uh, so Google Maps is typically going to open up um, generally at your location if it uh, knows your location. Uh, sometimes a little question will pop up asking if it can know your location. I'm located in Kansas at the moment. So let's say I wanted to plan a uh, trip from, to, from Wichita, Kansas to uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area. I can, I'm currently in Wichita but I'm going to type in search for Dallas, Texas. And that's going to show me Dallas, Texas and information about Dallas, Texas. It'll give me weather. So Google Maps will kind of give you information about the location you're looking for. Um, and uh, there's a little arrow here. Um, that and it says directions. If I click that, it's going to go into a mode where it's asks me where I'm starting from. So if I put in Wichita, Kansas, it's going to map out what it thinks the best route for me to take is. Now the nice thing about this is you have options. If you click this option thing down here, um, you can avoid highways if you wanted to just take uh, back roads and have more of a scenic route. Um, one thing that's kind of nice is to avoid tolls. When you do that, it will readjust your route so that you can avoid toll roads as much as possible uh, if you're not into paying toll roads. So I'm going to go ahead and click that, and it will give me all of my, or several options. Um, now, the nice thing about this is, as far as options, it tells me how long approximately it will take. Now, this is assuming that I'm driving the speed limit, and I typically drive a little slower than that in my motorhome, so I'll take that with a grain of salt and add on time. But uh, So if I want the shortest route time-wise, uh, I can choose that one. Sometimes the shortest route time-wise is actually longer mileage-wise. You just might be on more major freeways, so you can decide what type of route you want to take. You'll notice that the first one here is the one that's highlighted in blue down here in the center. Uh, the other routes, the other two, are actually these gray ones. If I wanted to take that instead and not take, uh, for this example, the 35 all the way down, I could click that. It's a little bit longer, but maybe it's on the way of something I want to see. So that, um, and that'll basically tell me my route. Now, how do I couple that with all stays? Uh, well, here's the nifty thing with Google Maps. It has a measurement tool. And if you right click on the map, it'll say, give you an option to measure distance. So let's say I only wanted to travel 200 miles in a day before I wanted to stop. So I hit the measurement tool and uh, it says uh, down here at the bottom, click on the map to trace a path you want to measure. So I'm clicking on the map around Wichita, and it put my zero over here. Now you can click that and drag that into a line. And you'll notice as I drag this, the mileage meter counts up. And so as, if I only wanted to travel 200 miles, I can drag this until I'm about, and if you turn a corner, you just click once again there, and it'll add another uh, pip. So... That's about 192 miles. Now, keep in mind that this is uh, how the crow flies, so give or take, you know, 20 miles or so, depending upon how curvy the road is. 
but I know that if I was to take this route, I wanted to stop somewhere around this location. And that tells me that this location is about in Asher, Texas. So now I have used Google Maps to plan uh, to get my distance and plan where my first city is. Now, where could I stop in that city? That's where I would then go over into All Stays, which of course I talk about in the All Stays video. I would go to All Stays, um, go over to Asher, and it would tell me where all of the uh, Walmarts are, if there's a crackle barrel, uh, Cracker Barrel there, um, or any other big box store that allows you to park overnight. It also would tell me um, where the RV parks were around there. So then I could start narrowing down um, my choices. The uh, other cool thing about planning a route with Google Maps is uh, you can add a destination. So let's say I wanted to eventually arrive in Dallas, Texas, but it was imperative that I stop in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Well, this doesn't have me going through Tulsa, Oklahoma. So you'll notice the little plus sign over here. If I click that, I can drag this to any part in the uh, directions that I want. Now I add Tulsa, Oklahoma, and my route will reroute through Tulsa, Oklahoma, in which case I can, um, I can actually click all these little circles that I measured and take the measurement away, go back to measure distance, and it adds my little pip right there, and then I just click along the route like I did before until I get to, that's about 154 miles. Um, so if I'm stopping in Tulsa, Oklahoma, I wouldn't need to measure. I could just, uh, I know that it's about 154 miles away. And I can even see that if I go over here. Notice there's only one route that it's showing me. And if I hit details, it will pull up turn by turn details of that trip. And the first uh, from Wichita to Tulsa, that is 178 miles. And then from Tulsa to Dallas, it's 267 miles. So I can kind of get an idea of where I'm going. Now, what can you do with this information? The nice thing is if, you're, uh, if you use your phone as a GPS while you are driving, there's a little button right up here uh, that has a picture of a phone and send. If I click that, um, it pulls up uh, phones that are attached to my Google account and I can click which one I want to send those to. Or I can send this route via email uh, to myself, or I can even text that. I hit text, and uh, it um, uh, Google knows my phone number, and uh, it will text that to me. Um, I can even send this route as a link uh, to a friend, or once again, you can send it to an email, and if you're into that, you can print it out. So as you can see, it's pretty easy um, to add stops and uh, as well as figure out uh, a route to take. Um, there is another little shortcut if there's a, a little side thing, you don't want to necessarily add it to the stop, but let's say there's a particular look around here. Um, let's say for some odd reason there was something in uh, Nawada, uh, Oklahoma that I wanted to see. This blue line, you'll notice it has a little circle and it says drag to change route, I can simply click that route and drag it over to force it to go on a road or on a route. Now notice it doesn't add that as a stop, it just forces the route in that direction. To take that away, you simply click that circle when you're not in, uh, uh, it, when you're done measuring, you can uh, right click and say clear measurement. And then once I click this circle, it will go away and take the route back to where it was before. And one last Google Maps idea. I'm going to go back to my, or get out of directions here. And go back to my current location. So as I said in the beginning of the video, a big question that we get is where can I insert activity here? Like where can I eat? 
Well, the nice thing about Google Maps is it's really easy to find that out. I can go on my computer or my cell phone and type in something like restaurant, um, and it will show me all the restaurants in my area. Now, that's kind of basic. Let's say you're looking for a particular type of restaurant. You can say um, Mexican restaurants, and it will show you only Mexican restaurants. Or let's say you were eating on a budget and you wanted to put something like cheap restaurants near me. Well, notice the, uh, the selection will actually change. Um, now I'll have mostly fast food place, uh, places, and um, you'll notice that in the description it has a little dollar sign, so you'll be able to see as far as what is uh, cheap in the area. Or let's say I'm looking for a specific type, and I want a um, just a breakfast restaurant. If I type in breakfast, it's only going to show me places that um, either serve breakfast along with other things or are breakfast places. You can put in um, coffee for the morning and it's only going to show you coffee shops. Um, if you needed repairs in your RV, if you were to type in RV uh, supply store, it will search for RV supply stores around your area. So as opposed to looking in a phone book or something that would, or asking the RV park staff, which they may or may not know. Case in point, if I just got to a place as a work camper, I may not know everything about Wichita. So using Google Maps is a good um, starting point to find quickly what you want and what you need. And it also does give extra information. Um, case in point, uh, let's type in, um, Let's go with, let's type in park and see what parks are around here because there's quite a bit of parks. Um, so if I was looking for a park, I typed in that and let's say this one's close to me, this Chisholm Creek Park. Well, not only is it going to show me uh, where that's located, it's also going to give me reviews, uh, and people leave those reviews on the internet, so it's very easy to find information about a place. Once again, you can send that information to your phone or email it to yourself, and if the place has a website, um, and I'm going to go, let's say you were looking for an RV park, because um, I know that there's a website here. Let's say... We got USIRV Park in Wichita, currently where we're staying. You'll notice that down here, there's a little web um, thing and there's a website. So directly from Google Maps, I can find out where it is as well as click and it'll take me to that particular place's website. Um, so there's a lot of really good information um, that you can get just by looking at the description in Google Maps. So not only can you get the location, you can find out information about it and decide if that's exactly what you're looking for. So those are my uh, the, my first tips on using Google Maps. Uh, in my next video, I am actually going to use Google Maps to um, and couple that with Allstays to show you um, exactly what the process looks like to um, get a route and then find places to stop on your way at all stays. So join the next video. If you liked this video, please click to subscribe. And uh, you can also like us on Facebook, uh, Henley's Happy Trails. Visit our website, henleyshappytrails.com, or um, subscribe uh, to our blog on henleyshappytrails.com. Uh, thank you again for watching, and happy trails.